Happy January, everybody. So my team have briefed me to come up with a hug in a mug, something beautiful. And I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful mug cake. Now, interestingly, mug cakes are about the only thing that seems to be engaging my teenagers in the art of cooking at the moment. They see it on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever other platform they're sharing around, and they come up with these incredible recipes that generally never work, if I'm honest. So I thought I'd give you a delicious mug cake that does work, that's amazing. This basis of a recipe is brilliant and you can kind of flex it to do different things at different times of the year, for sure. But let's get back to January. Look before me, lovely people. There are the remnants of chocolate from your little chocolate basket or tin. You know, it's Christmas time. There's a little Santa in gold, in green, and in red, we got little bounties, Twixes, and a whole plethora of brands that you could use any of. Uh, the idea is you pick the one that you like. So, that is the optional extra. Forget about that for the second. Find yourself uh, a person with a bowl and a whisk, or a food processor, even better. Um, find yourself, this is what I thought was quite funny, my testing team, who have tested this within an inch of its life, are so proficient that they said a small banana. Now, I don't know why, but a small banana made me laugh. Um, you can use any banana, but about that much. So if you've got a big banana, cut it down to that small banana, but if you've got a small banana, use a small banana. And ideally, very ripe. If you get the ripe ones, um, they're a little bit more kind of butterscotchy and caramelly. So the small banana goes into the food processor. Uh, we're gonna go in first with four tablespoons of self-raising flour. And that is followed straight away by four tablespoons of olive oil. Now, olive oil is very much used in the south of Europe for cakes instead of butter, which is more northern. And what it gives you is a really nice spongy sponge. So a bit more bouncy uh, and it's really, really good. So olive oil as fat in a cake, completely normal, by the way. Then we're going to go in with two tablespoons of dark sugar. Now, you can use any sugar, but by using two nice heaped tablespoons of dark sugar, you're getting that nice sort of treacly, sort of deeper flavour, which is a little bit more sort of sticky toffee pudding vibes. And then one free range, large egg, no shell. If you do have shell, you'll have to pick it out. Uh, I will put a little pinch of salt just to season the flour. Whiz it up. One minute until nice and smooth. So that is that. It's done. Now, if you get yourself a nice little spatula, we're going to divide this into four. This makes four portions. And it's so easy. It's so fast. It's really, really reliable. And it is delicious. Now, if you wanted to use like different things for different flavors. You could use a little lemon zest in there if you wanted to make it a little bit lighter. You could use some of that sort of ginger and syrup to give it a little vibe. You could use chocolate chips. You could flavor it with a little coffee. You can just have fun with it. But what I'm gonna do is divide this into four, about, let's say sort of two centimeters in depth, maybe slightly less. Let's cook this while I do the others. Uh, you can do this in advance. We're using self-raising flour, so that's gonna make it almost triple, maybe double in size. So let's take Santa, the original one, the green one. We're gonna submerge him. Uh, you could take any other chocolate that you love. I happen to be a lover of Twix. Just snap it. Right, and we're gonna put that into here. So that goes into the depths of our sponge. And then we put this in a microwave at full whack, just one for one and a half minutes. It's that simple. You're gonna love this. If you wanna make this in advance and pop these in the fridge and just cook them one by one for your kids, absolutely you can. They can choose their own little fillings. The heat will now stimulate the self-raising flour and it will start to double in size. Shut up, shut up now. I bestow upon you a true mug cake, bejeweled by Santa, who is actually still there, who's sadly just slowly gone to sleep, and now we're gonna eat him. If you wish, these uncooked ones can go in the fridge and be cooked to order, or you can just 
knock them out again. Very, very nice. But that, for me, is a beautiful thing. Served with some yogurt, served with some ice cream, served with some custard. Let's get in there. I want to show you, actually, it's, it's a really good little sponge. I wouldn't normally use a fork, but like, let's just do a little autopsy on Santa here. So we're going to just take him out of his little cosy bed. Let's have a look. First of all, have a look at this. So we've got the bubbles, right? we've got that sponginess. It's soft. It smells amazing. So you've got that banana-y vibe going on, but then in the middle, you've got all the chocolates and the oozy, melty chocolate. And then all I've got to do now is eat some. It's very hot. But it's very delicious. So, if you like that, kids, please share it. Because if you share it and it goes viral, my kids will be really, really embarrassed and that will make me really, really happy. Thank you so much. Happy New Year.